What we have on the bench today is a Fujikar Auto 7. This particular example must be slightly older. There's no auto date feature on this. This camera does seem to be still quite popular here in Japan. Examples go anywhere between two and a half to maybe 9,000 yen. This particular one I bought out of a junk pile for about two or 300. It has a few problems and I'll go through some of those now. The first issue I noticed with this was that there was film loaded in it, but there was it was actually stuck in there. It was binding on something. When I put batteries in there, you could hear some groans of like a motor or something moving and trying to, to do something, but it was just not working. You could hear the energization of the flash, that typical flash charge whine. So it seems that there's certain parts of this working and maybe some something some issue inside. Cosmetically, this one was actually pretty good condition. Um, in the shot now, the front lenses are missing, but that's actually because I've gone ahead and, and taken this apart last night and I decided this might actually make an interesting short video. So I'm going to just show what's underneath. Uh, we I pulled this section apart already. Okay. Nothing too exciting down here right now. There's the piezo buzzer, some small capacitor here, kind of looks okay, small circuit board, doesn't appear to be too many problems down here, nothing obvious is wrong, it's the, obviously the very large flash capacitor. These capacitors typically range between 240 to maybe 400 volts, um, they usually hold a fairly decent sized charge too, and for that reason, before we go too far, and because I heard the sound of energization, we're going to make a discharger for this and we're going to show you how to discharge the capacitor before we um, carry on with too much work. They do give enough bite that they could actually potentially be you know perhaps lethal, um, it, very unpleasant at the at the least and also if they discharge into a circuit or somewhere where they're not supposed to um, they can do some damage to other circuitry in there. So it's always wise to discharge these safely and properly. So not seeing anything particularly wrong here. Uh, we'll just close this up and I'll show you the top side. So most of the circuitry here, it all looks pretty, pretty good. I look through a magnifying glass because uh, you know you want to look for bad solders and, and things like that. All the solder on here looks very bright and clean. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any particular problems. Now what I did notice though is that there's a quite a lot of blackness on this pad here. Um, that doesn't appear to connect to anything like if you look under here there's nothing for that to connect to. But it is near a capacitor here. I don't know if that's relevant, but I just gave it a bit of a clean anyway. Now, this is the actuator switch. It's basically just a bridging spring, basically. It's soldered here. It touches a pad here. What I did notice is under here, it was very black um, or green. I'm not really sure which, but it was quite dirty it didn't look great um, but also this pin here looks fine but then there's actually another solder joint here uh, which probably you can't see here there's a close-up photo I'll put in later for you to look at um, and they actually connect to this little capacitor under here now I suspect there's no longer a proper connection being made this is probably not doing the job it's supposed to um, and who knows what that controls so there's been some some issue uh, it looks like on this side maybe there's been a bit of water ingress or something like that so a couple little things that we need to fix up 
like I said, I've already gone in, cleaned that contact, I've cleaned this up a little bit. It doesn't seem to be anything too bad underneath. As a matter of course, I'd probably like to maybe replace that capacitor and this one. Definitely this one, because this needs to be redone, regardless. So to get this board off, there seems to be one screw here, one under there, one over there. Um, and as I said before, uh, this big orange wire, um, you might remember from the underneath, that goes to the flash. And there's also, a, I think, a matching blue wire somewhere behind there as well. Now I'd like to get that discharged properly. I'll make the tool, I've got bits and pieces, I'll have to raid the parts bin for all of that. Um, typically what we'll use is something along the lines of a 500 to 1K resistor, but it needs to be fairly high wattage. So I'll be using, I think, a 5 watt resistor, if I've got one of those, and uh, a couple of hook probes. Basically what that allows you to do is, they've got those little... Um, tiny little hooks that can hook around a, a wire and hold a connection. You don't need to hang on to it for very long yourself. Um, and that just allows you to go away while it discharges because you do want to give it some time because it doesn't discharge instantly. Well, it shouldn't discharge instantly if you do this properly and you get a more controlled discharge, you burn off charge out of that uh, capacitor and yeah, you can go and have coffee or something, come back, and it should be safe to, to work on. The other thing is, too, is that if you happen to, or if you want to, if, uh, if it's not in your road, you can just actually then leave it hooked up while you go and do, about, do your work, take it off when you actually finished your job. So that might be good if you actually want to try energization when you're um, still working on it, with it still open, and you... You can just unhook a probe, just see if it works, and then hook it back on just to discharge, and away you go. So for the moment, that's it. We'll have to raid the parts bin. The first step will be to make the, the discharge tool. The second will be to pull that top PCB as clear as we can, and then remove that capacitor. I'm not sure exactly how easy that's going to be to get out. I think because of the corrosion that's happened on one of those legs. It probably seems a little counterintuitive, but we probably need to actually try and re-solder that back on, get some more solder in there, and then the pump will probably be able to pull it out actually quite easily. But probably the first thing I'll do is just probably see what happens when I desolder that other pin. It might actually be loose enough to, to get it out. Okay, here we have the apparatus that we're going to use to discharge this capacitor. Basically, it's just a few probes here. They can hook around wires and they can just hang on. And alligator clip, plus a nice big fat five watt resistor. Now this value is actually, I think about 560. Probably really should be something like 10K or maybe even 20K. Probably what I'll do is I'll wrap this in something, um, a towel or some kind of cloth so that if it kind of explodes or catches fire or something we'll have something to you know to see um, and also I won't get any shrapnel blowing around the place so I think it's going to be fine maybe um, basically I was surprised uh, when I looked at uh, I've got a text sheet here for uh, Technics SU8011 and to dis discharge the capacitors in that they recommend using a 50 ohm capacitor like a 3 watt or 5 watt or something like that um, I mean it's a much lower voltage capacitor but I was actually very surprised that they only recommend using a 50 ohm um, so you know we'll see what happens uh, I think if you're going to subject this to sort of high current for a long time like that it would be a problem but I think we're just discharging so well you know if it doesn't work we're all learning something Okay, we're going to see if we get this other probe in there and maybe something exciting will happen or maybe nothing will happen. Maybe nothing. 
nothing's happening. Hmm, okay. Here we are back on the bench with the Fujika Auto 7. Now I had a few problems with this, as you might remember from the last segment. The small capacitor I have replaced and now there's actually a bit of life in this uh, camera. What didn't work was the flash. So what I did is I took this capacitor out, this is the flash capacitor, uh, could not find the right value or the exact value match for this but I did find uh, this is a 330 volt uh, 180 microfarad. I did find a 400 volt 100 microfarad which uh, physically the exact same dimensions it's not an uh, like a proper photo flash capacitor photo flash capacitors tend to have tighter tolerances uh, because they need to deliver a more precise charge to the flash basically the engineers have worked out exactly how much light they want under a certain circumstance and you know it's going to give you the better exposure However, um, for the purpose of uh, seeing if, if it was actually just this capacitor or something else, um, I just put in a, basically a, a, a 200 yen uh, easy to find 400 volt capacitor. Now, it's like I said, it's a bit under spec, but um, I'm happy to say that it is actually working. Um, it, once it charges up, it will flash, and you know, I don't think I can ask for a lot more out of this. Um, for what is essentially just a, a 500 yen camera all up now. Um, I think it's uh, come along well. I'm not exactly sure whether the whole focus system or anything like that is working exactly the way it should. It does move around. Uh, you can see it sort of uh, doing something when it's uh, deciding how far away something is. So I think the only thing for this now is basically to uh, screw it all back together um, and put a roll of film through it. Okay, I've put all the screws and things back together in this. Um, it's now set. So, as you can see, there's some life happening in there. That was not happening when I first bought it. It sort of groaned and carried on. Um, there were a few traces that needed fixing. Um, as well as that capacitor um, that basically had corroded away um, which sort of leads to my initial suspicion that perhaps there's a bit of water ingress in there and if we turn the flash on you may hear the the whine of the flash charge and should be charged enough to get a flash out of it there you go so I'm reasonably pleased with this at the moment and you know bit of mucking around maybe half an hour or so all up um, it takes longer when you start just trying to make videos out of it um, but yeah 500 yen out of a junk pile and maybe a working camera <laughs>